So first up is Abdul Adrian, Gorian's ward. It's four and a white for a four four legendary human warrior. When Abdul enters the battlefield, exile any number of non land permanents you control until Abdul leaves the battlefield. Create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token for each permanent exile this way. And he's got the background mechanic, so you can choose a background to uh, partner with him to have a dual commander. Um, I think I like that. It's kind of like Lagrilla from his previous set, but it gives you 1-1 one, one white soldier tokens. Exile any num number of other non-land permanents you control. So you could, like, in theory, put this in a treasure deck, have 25 treasures, play Abdul, make 25 one ones, and then have this big army instantly. It's... I think it works when it, when it wants to, and it does that that thing um actually maybe hold on one sec maybe i should put the should put the set logo on here shouldn't i somewhere Put it up here, I guess. And this crop is all of a sudden weirdly off. Gonna take a few seconds and crop it again. God, no, don't do that. Okay. So, it does white things. It's a white commander. I guess that works. Uh, next up, we have Ancient Gold Dragon. This is the cycle of uh, ancient dragons that they're releasing with Baldur's Gate. It's five white white for a 710 elder dragon creature with flying whenever ancient gold dragon deals combat damage to a player roll a d20 you create a number of one one blue fairy dragon creature tokens with flying equal to the result so you could like instantly make 20 flying one ones it's pretty good and all of the uh all of the ancient dragon cards do something similar. Roll a d20, does x thing. Uh, Archivist of Ogma, one in a white for a 2-2 halfling cleric with flash. Whenever opponent searches their library, you gain one life and draw a card. Okay, so you could flash this in after someone burns a spell and goes to search their library. Interesting. Two mana for a 2-2. Two, two. I don't know how often your opponent's going to be searching their library. So. It's alright. Ascend from Avernus. X white 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 for a sorcery. Return all creatures and planeswalker cards with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Exile ascend from Avernus. So this is a mass raised dead. That's pretty cool. Normally white doesn't get to to do something like that. Obviously you spend you know five mana is X. Then you've got an eight mana spell that brings back everything with five or less mana cost. That's pretty good. Um one sec. Soundtrack.
Give me one momento. Wait, why did my art crop get all borked again? Oh, because I'm not zoomed in on it, that's why. Lol. Um So yeah, that's that's a pretty neat little sorcery, a little graveyard dredge, mass dredge, if you will. Pretty fun. I think it's gonna be really powerful with those like Elspeth and Wandering Emperor decks. It's gonna get real annoying real fast. Okay, let's move on. Astral Confrontation. Four and a white for an instant. This spell costs one less to cast for each opponent you're attacking. Exile target creature. Okay, so in a game of Commander, you've got three. If best case scenario, you're attacking all three of your opponents. So this costs one and a white, and you just get to exile one target creature. So this is Two mana exile target creature, that's pretty standard. I guess it's just not so aggressively asking you to attack everybody. Yeah, one out of ten. Bane's Invoker, one and a white for a 2 2 human cleric, lots of. Human clerics in this white set. Uh, it has wind walk. So for eight mana, up to two target creatures each get plus two, plus two, and gain flying until end of turn. Whoa, that's pretty big. Banishment, three and a white for an enchantment with flash. When banishment enters the battlefield, exile target non land permanent. An opponent controls and all other non-land permanents your opponents control with the same name as that permanent until banishment leaves. Wow. Okay, so four mana and you get a mass portable hole, uh, a mass containment. Oh, that's pretty good. They do get them back when banishment is removed from play, so got to keep that in mind when you're putting this together, but... As far as like order of operations on how to play this card, you wait till someone's built up their army and hopefully it's an army of tokens and you can banish all of them at once. Next up we've got Battle Angels of Tyre for two white white 4-4 four, four angel knight creature with flying and myriad. Myriad is one of those Returning mechanics. Uh, when Battle Angel of Tyre deals combat damage to a player, draw a card if that player has more cards in hand than each other player. Then you create a treasure token if that player controls more lands than each other player. Then you gain three life if that player has more life than each other player. So this is really a come from behind card. You've got to be very particular with who you're attacking to get it to trigger all of those things. Um, yeah, four mana, four, four flyer with some extra fun stuff on it. And it's mythic. Pretty good. Uh, Beckoning Will O Wisps. Oh, sorry, just one wisp. Will O Wisp. Two and a white for a one, three spirit creature with flying. Lure the unwary. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose an opponent. Creatures attacking the last chosen player gets plus one, plus zero. That's interesting. It doesn't say creatures you're using to attack the last chosen player. So after your turn, the, when it goes all the way around the board or the table, everyone that attacks the player you chose gets plus one plus oh on all their creatures that's pretty brutal blessed hippogriff yeah they're bringing adventures back which is fun 
Uh, blessed Hippogriff is three and a white for a 2-3 Hippogriff with flying. Whenever Blessed Hippogriff attacks, target attacking creature without flying gains flying until end of turn. And its adventure is Tire's Blessing for one what for one white pip. Target creature gains indestructible until end of turn. That's pretty that's a pretty good card. That's a pretty good common, actually. It's four mana for a two three, which isn't fantastic. Automatically like below par. Give it flying, it brings it up a little bit more. It gives something else flying until end of turn. You bring it up even a little bit more. And then it has this um, snakeskin veil, indestructible, instant speed uh, spell attached to it. So it brings it up a little bit more. I would say that at the end of the day, you put everything on the bill together and you check out. It's probably a, a good card. I would put it at par. Contraband Livestock, one and a white for an instant. Exile target creature, then roll a d20. You roll a one to nine, its controller creates a four four green ox. You roll 10 to 19, its controller creates a two two green boar. And if it's a 20, the control controller creates an 01 white goat. Cool, so you're changing something amazing on your opponent's board into something potentially boring and useless doesn't get rid of anything you do if you're trying to get rid of something really interesting say it's like a 2-2 with lifelink or something that's really boning you with its um triggered abilities you do have the potential to just change it into a 4-4 ox which you know you could do to say someone's commander or their background that they've attached to it if their background's really strong just whatever's being the biggest pain in the ass at the at worst case scenario it's just turned into a boring 4-4 ox not too shabby got crystal dragon look at this guy he's kind of cute really upset that someone's trying to steal his uh, egg there makes sense um so he's four white white for a four four creature dragon with flying and vigilance he's got a and a sorcery attached to him called rob the horde return target artifact enchantment or legendary card from your graveyard to your hand that's pretty good it is again like there you can see the math they're doing with these adventure cards um so a 4-4 four, four flying vigilance would normally cost you four mana to caught to cast but they're adding on two mana for this adventure again that like evens it out like you get the extra ability but it costs more mana in total at the end of the day it's it's par i do think that there's an awful lot of graveyard play with these white cards so far which is very interesting next up we have cut a deal two and a white for a sorcery each opponent draws a card then you draw a card for each opponent who drew a card this way so you give all of your opponents one card and you get three cards for three mana i'd say that's below par Dawnbringer Cleric. They're reprinting Dawnbringer Cleric. Um, so this guy is a pain in the ass in any white uh, against it. This card is a pain in the ass to play against when you're playing against any white life gain, any white um, control deck. Uh, he's just one and a white for a 1-3, so he's got a, a bigger booty than normal. Uh, when he enters... The battlefield you can choose to gain two life destroy target enchantment or exile target card from a graveyard so it's got a little bit of everything on it and it's printed at common again so you're gonna see if you're playing constructed you're gonna see 40 40 four of these in every white deck 
hands down. This is a just a decent card. It is above par. Oh, we've got another commander. Ellen Harbreeze, busybody. Three and a white for a 2-4 human peasant, legendary creature. You can tap to look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of tokens you created this turn. Put one of those cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library. And you can, again, attach a background card to her. That's interesting. So you, you get paid off by the, the more tokens you make, the more cards you get to look at. Uh, Commander has a lot of reasons to go through as many cards as you can. You hear everyone always talking about the fact that in limited or in standard, there's not always a need to go through all of your cards, but in a singleton format with a hundred cards, you want to look at as many cards as you can throughout a game so that you can have a higher percentage chance of finding a card that's going to fix whatever problem you're having. And there's lots of problems to have. Uh, so we've got Far Traveler. This is a background card. So this can be your commander's background. Uh, for two and a white, commander creatures you own have at the beginning of your end step, exile up to one target tapped creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So this is teleportation circle that you can attach to a commander. That's scary. Above par for sure. Flaming Fist, another background. For two and a white, commander creatures you own have whenever this creature attacks. It gains double strike until end of turn. Three mana give your commander double strike. That's pretty scary too. Above par for sure. Flaming Fist Officer, two and a white for a gnome soldier. Whenever another creature you control leaves the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Flaming Fist Officer. So if you're playing an exile deck, it's pretty good. It's like that stone bound familiar, the dog that got a 1-1 one, one every time you uh, put a card into exile or any time a card was put into exile. It doesn't have to be you. Very similar. I'd say that's uh, a three mana for a 2-2. Two, two. I'd say that's on par. Githzerai, Githzerai Monk. Probably a cooler way to pronounce that. Four and a white for a 3-2 Gith Monk. With flash and flying. Psychic defense. When Githzerai Monk enters the battlefield, tap all creatures you don't control. Holy shiza. That is above par. Five mana flash creature that taps everything. All creatures. And it's flying. That's pretty great. That's pretty good. The mana's a little steep on it. But can't go wrong with tap everything. A uh, Goliath Paladin is four and a white for a three six giant knight creature with vigilance. When Goliath Paladin enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. So again, the initiative is basically like a monarch. Um you get an extra step at the beginning of your upkeep where you travel through a dungeon called the Undercity and each room has different perks including drawing cards, putting counters um, it's Monarch pl Plus and yeah it's going to be pretty prevalent in this set so we're going to see a lot of cards that uh, say take the initiative on it or if you have the initiative again the video linked in the YouTube here below uh, I go over some of the set mechanics so next up we have great sword of tire one and a white for an artifact equipment equip cost is one white whenever equip creature attacks put a one one counter on it and tap up to one target creature defending player controls pretty good I think that there's lots of room to, you know, be very critical and and win a game with which creatures you're tapping, especially if they're 
close to death and they've only got one blocker, yada yada. Um, that's on par. It's a common one and a white. Equip it for a white. Three mana total for the one one counter is not fantastic, but uh, great guardian naga. The guardian naga is five white white for a five six naga creature with vigilance. Uh, as long as it's your turn, prevent all damage that would be dealt to Guardian Naga. So she can't be hurt if it's your turn. And then she has an instant attached to it. Uh, banishing Coils for two and a white. Uh, you get an instant adventure, exile target enchantment, or artifact. Seven mana for a 5-6 with Vigilance. Unless it's got a three mana exile artifact or enchantment. That's about par, I'd say. Uh, Guiding Bolt is two and a white for an instant. Destroy target creature with power four or greater. Then scry two. This is a very common card in white these days. Destroy something with power four or greater. This one's got a scry two attached to it. Let's say that's par. We've got Hammers of Moradin. Two and a white for a 3-3 three, three Dwarf Cleric with Myriad. Uh, this The Myriad rules text reads, Whenever this creature attacks for each opponent other than defending player, you may create a token that's a copy of this creature that's tapped and attacking that player or Planeswalker they control. Exile the tokens at the end of combat. It's like a mirror effect. Um, when you attack with Hammers of Moradin, Opponent one, you can make a copy that attacks opponent two and make a copy that attacks opponent three. And then at the end of your turn, the two copies go away. Uh, whenever Hammers of Morden attacks for each opponent, tap up to one target creature that player controls. So it's just got a little bit of uh, extra offense because you get to tap their best defender or their only defender or what have you. I'd say that's above par. The Myriad stuff is going to be generally above par because I'm looking at this set purely as you would play it in Commander. And I think that that's important. Uh, Horns of Valhalla. One and a white for an artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control. And then it has equip three. Uh, so... In these like token heavy white decks, you got 10 white, white, one, one white soldier tokens. This is going to be big. Um, you put this on your commander and then all of a sudden your commander's got plus 10, plus 10. And then it's got, uh, is guards call for X white, white. You create X one, X one, one white soldier creature tokens. There you go. So you make a bunch of tokens on with the sorcery and then play the equipment and attach it and it gets a bunch of plus one plus one counters not counters it gets plus one plus one next up we've got Icewind Stalwart three and a white for a three three tiefling warrior creature with protection fighting style when Icewind Stalwart enters the battlefield exile up to one target non-warrior creature you control then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control so you get a blink, one free blink on a non-warrior. It's not too bad. Exile up to one target non-warrior creature. So it has to be a creature. Which can limit you a little bit, but otherwise that's not all that bad. Uh, there is one thing I want. I didn't add Let me just add one quick.
loop it. Horizontally. Well, I didn't hit flip horizontally. I put horizontal. Now look what I've done. Now look what I've done. Okay, can I just rotate it? Please? Thank you. Oh my god. Grab the background. Okay, fine. Leave it. Leave it there. Leave it there. So the next card we have is Inspiring Leader for two and a white. It's a legendary enchantment background. So you can play this with your commander. Commander creatures you have. Commander creatures you own have. Creature tokens you control get plus two, plus two. So it's a cool little anthem for token decks. Pretty good. I'd say that's about par. Uh, Lazelle Blacketh's Champion. This is one of the main characters from Baldur's Gate 3, the new video game from Larian. Uh, for two and a white, it's a 3 3 Gith Warrior legendary creature. If you would put one or more counters on a creature or planeswalker you control or on yourself, put that many plus one of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead. says if you would put more than one count so this wouldn't make you double up on like poison tokens or infect interesting three mana for a three three with uh a little token buffer or a counter buffer that's not bad i think that's about par probably uh lazelle's acrobatics Three and a white for an instant. Exile all non-token creatures you control. Then roll a d20. One through nine. Return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Which is probably your end step. Or you're doing this to like fog. Four mana fog. If you roll. If you have the worst roll. This is just a four mana fog. Uh, for non-token creatures. If you roll a 10 through 20, return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control, then exile them again. Return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So you get to, to blink twice. Which is cool. It's like a fog blink mix if you roll, uh, if you roll well. It says above par. Next, we've got Legion Loyalty, six white, white for an enchantment, mythic enchantment. Creatures you control have Myriad. So that duplicating effect that was on that uh, Dwarf Warrior card. This eight mana enchantment. That's steep, but it gives everything you have Myriad. So every time you attack, you can attack everybody. Like, it's pretty scary. Next up, we have Lulu Loyal Hollyphant. Look how fucking adorable this is. Lulu Loyal Hollyphant costs three and a white. God, I hope this is the arena pet for this set. Three and a white for a 3 2 legendary creature, Elephant Angel. With flying. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, Put a 1-1 one, one counter on each tapped creature you control. Then untap them. That's pretty good. Uh, and you can choose a background, so you can attach a background to your Oliphant. Which is always good. Absolutely adorable. The next up is Martial Impetus. Two and a white for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and is goaded. It attacks each combat if able and attacks a player other than you if able. So you enchant someone else's creature, it gets tougher, but it can't attack you. Whenever enchanted creature attacks, 
Each other creature that's attacking one of your opponents gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. That's pretty... That's pretty mean. Uh, they're reprinting Minimus Containment, which just turns something into a treasure. This is a this is a good card. It gets a lot of play. People love it. People hate playing against it, so that means something. Uh, Noble Heritage, one and a white for a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have when this creature enters the battlefield, and at the beginning of your upkeep, each player may put plus two one one counters on a creature they control. For each opponent who does. You gain protection from that player until your next turn. When this creature enters the battlefield, well, you play your creature, and then every player can put two 1-1 one, one counters on a creature they control. And if your opponents choose to do that, because they can choose to decline, if they choose to do that, they can't hit you with anything. Um, until your next turn. That's pretty good. I'd say that's above par. It's a little fun. Um, kind of like group hug slash goad, which is interesting combo. Next up, we have Noble Heritage. Pegasus. Oh no, sorry. Noble Heritage is the card we just read. We have Pegasus Guardian. Five and a white for a 3 3 creature. Pegasus with flying. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, create a 1 1 white Pegasus creature token with flying. So, with all these blink effects, um, you can you can trigger this really easily, uh, which kind of makes up for the fact that it's a 6 mana 3 3, which is just generally terrible. Uh, it has an adventure on it. Rescue the foal, one and a white exile target creature you control, then return it to the card. Then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control, so it has a two mana blink. And then you play the Pegasus. And because you blink something, uh, you get a 1-1 one -one Pegasus creature token with flying. I'd say this probably chalks up to, like, below par. It's one of those cards, though, that might just be really surprising. I feel like building out a Pegasus army is uh, going to be somebody's strategy. Next up, we have Rasad in Bashir. Two and a white for an 0-3 human monk legendary creature. Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. So it's a tree folk. Not really, but that's what tree folks sometimes like to do. Uh, whenever Rasad attacks, if you have the initiative, double the toughness of each creature you control till end of turn. Who's a background? Again, you can attach one of the cool backgrounds to it. And also, if you have the initiative, you build a deck that keeps initiative um, and has big booty creatures, and then you're doubling that booty every time you go to attack until end of turn and you do a bunch of damage uh that's interesting i'd say that's above above par recruitment drive two and a white for a sorcery roll a d20 one through nine you create two two white creature soldier tokens i don't know why i read that so poorly 10 through 19, you create two 2-2 two, two white knight creature tokens. And if you roll a 20, you create three 2-2 two, two white knight creature tokens. So for three mana, you could end up with three 2-2 two, two white knights. But for three mana, you could also wind up with two 1-1 one, one white soldiers. Either way, it's not terrible. Not fantastic. I'd say it's about par. Uh, Rescuer Twinga. One and a white for a 2 2 elemental spirit creature with flash. And they have natural shelter. When Rescuer Twinga enters the battlefield, you may return another permanent you control to its owner's hand. So you flash it in, bounce something back to your hand. That's pretty good. 
above par, probably. Uh, Roving Harper. Two and a white for a 2-2 two -two Elf Scout. When Roving Harper enters the battlefield, draw a card. That's exactly par. Usually you pay one extra mana and get to draw a card. So it's a 2-2, two -two, so you have to pay three. When it ETBs, you draw a card. There's been one of these sort of in each of the last four or five sets pretty average they do play well they do make their way into decks if you're playing limited especially definitely good uh to play yeah scouting hawk is two and a white for a one one bird creature with flying and it has keen sight when scouting hawk enters the battlefield if an opponent controls more lands than you search your library for a planes put it onto the battlefield then shuffle I don't love that. Sure, you get ramp. Um, but is it really ramp if you're just playing catch up at that point? Because, you know, you're you're behind. That's the only way this triggers and you get all planes. If it said basic land on it. I might put it a little bit higher. If it was maybe a 2-2 two -two flyer, I might put it a little bit higher. I don't know. I think that's below par. Sculpted Sunburst. Three white white for a sorcery. Choose a creature you control. Then each opponent chooses a creature they control with equal or lesser power. If you choose a creature this way, exile each creature not chosen by any player this way. Choose a creature you control. Then each opponent chooses a creature they control with equal or lesser power. Okay, that part makes sense. If you choose a creature this way, but it asks you to choose a creature. If you choose a creature this way, exile each creature not chosen by any player this way. I feel like the wording is just like confusing, or maybe it's obtuse on purpose. Um, so if I have a board with two cards on it, And like I have magic cards within reach. If I have two cards, choose a creature you control. Okay, I'm gonna choose this one. Then each opponent chooses a creature they control with two or less mana. Oh, two or less, one or less power, sorry. Power, not mana. Then if I chose a creature this way, exile each creature not chosen this way. So I would have to exile this and then other players would have to exile all of the creatures they chose. I guess the benefit is that like, if I save my five, five, then you're hoping that everyone else can only save something with less than five. I guess maybe it's just purely like a come from behind type card where, you know, I have one creature on the board, but my opponents have armies or one opponent has 20 tokens. And we can just exile them all. That's, that's interesting. I'm, I'm going to say that's par because I don't necessarily know that it's not a card I, I feel like you would want to play all the time, which automatically brings it down a notch, but it's also pretty powerful in almost board wiping. So I would say par and we'll see. I'm interested to see how this plays out. Uh, we've got Slaughter the Strong. One white white for a sorcery. Each player chooses any number of creatures they control with total power four or less. Then sacrifices all other creatures they control. This is like the exact same thing. Except for... There's a mana value cap. Cap. 
total power four or less. So if I have four one ones, I can save them all. Or if I have four one ones and a ten ten, I have to give up my ten ten. I don't know. Again, it's like at least this one has a better mana cost. The other one was five mana. At least this one's a little bit cheaper. I feel like you just play this if you have a token deck and you're making one ones or, you know, you're not playing a, a creature heavy deck at all. I don't know, par, we'll say par. Uh, Steadfast Unicorn is one man. Oh my God, this looks like Rapidash. That's so cool. John Tracker is the artist. Great art. Uh, Steadfast Unicorn is one white for a 1-2 Unicorn. Already above par. For three and a white, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain vigilance until end of turn. Activate only during your turn. That's above par. No matter how you shake it out, the math means it's above par. It's, it's a 1-2 for one. Already you're getting a deal. And then it's got a four mana pump everything, give it vigilance on your turn. You can swing with your army and not worry about leaving back blockers. Good card. Good card, great art. I think that might be my favorite one out of the white cards so far. Uh, next up we have Stone Skin. Two and a white for an enchantment aura with flash. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus zero plus ten. Wow. Okay, so for three mana, you give something plus 10 uh, toughness, which is going to save it from most things. It won't save it from destroys or death touch, but if you, it has flash, so you're going to want to do this to save something after you've declared it a blocker to something you know this is going to save it from. Um, that's really interesting. I like this better than I like most of the white instant combat tricks uh, most of them are like deal four damage to this or deal three damage to attacking or defending creature this is this is at least a little bit more interesting a little more fun i'd say it's above par uh tabaxi two can ears oh my god they're two can riders four and a white for a three two cat ranger with flying and myriad Again, Myriad, every time you attack, you create, you can create a token that can attack your other opponents um, that you exile at the end of your turn or end of combat. That's cool. Five mana, three, two. It's a little below par. Flying brings it up to about par. Myriad makes it above par. So it's, a, it's above par. Get in through the air. You can throw it at everybody. Not bad, Toucans. Uh, next, we've got Underseller Sweep. Four and a white for an enchantment. Underseller Sweep enters the battlefield, take the initiative. Again, the initiative is like Monarch Plus. Um, beginning of your upkeep, you get to travel through the Undercity Dungeon and trigger whichever room abilities you're looking for. Whenever you attack, if you or a player you're attacking has the initiative, create two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. So that's nice. So this incentivizes you to not only attack as the person with the initiative, as the monarch, but it also incentivizes you to attack the monarch if you lose it. That's pretty good. I like that. I see what you're doing. Above par, for sure. Veteran Soldier, one and a white for a legendary background. Again, you can attach these to commanders and and kind of replace the partner system. So you have a commander and a background. Commander creatures you own have whenever this creature attacks a player. If no opponent has more life than that player, for each opponent, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier that's ta tapped and attacking that player. So if you're attacking the strongest guy you get three white soldiers every time you attack them. 
That's not bad. I'd say that's about par. White Plume Adventurer. Two and a white for a 3-3 Orc Cleric. When White Plume Adventurer enters the battlefield, take the initiative. Oh, this was the uh, card they used to explain how initiative works. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, untap a creature you control. If you've completed a dungeon, untap all creatures you control instead. Oh. White Plume Adventurer lets you untap at the end of everybody's turn if you've completed a dungeon, which is pretty great. Wind Shaper Planetar. Planetar? Planetar? It's four and a white for a 4-4 four, four angel. 4-4 four, four angels. Pretty standard. Uh, it has flash. So that brings it above par. Flying. It's an angel thing. Uh, when Wind Shaper Planetar enters the battlefield during the declare attacker step for each attacking creature you may reselect which player or planeswalker that creature is attacking interesting so it's a redirect on a creature something i don't think they've ever done it's pretty cool it, it also notes in brackets here, it can't attack its controller or its controller's planeswalker. So you can't take someone's creatures and redirect them back at their own face. It has to attack one of the other two opponents. That's pretty neat. Five mana. It's a rare. Four, four flyer with flash. You want to play it during attack. Uh, declare attacker step. That's pretty great. I even see like plenty of opportunity to like just play this out if you've got five mana and you don't have anything else to do or this is just something you have in your back pocket and you're hanging on for dear hope i like this card it's above par for sure next up we have worms crossing patrol one white for a one one human soldier creature with myriad so, one mana for a 1-1 one, one that you can attack all three of your opponents with if you want to. Uh, your temple is under attack. Two and a white for an instant. Choose one. This is one of those choose your own adventure cards from um, that wizards introduced in the last D&D set. Uh, so you get to choose one. Pray for protection. Creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Or strike a deal. You and target opponent each draw two cards. That's pretty good. It's interesting. I think it could play out favorably for for you and uh, an opponent. Obviously, if you get to draw two cards, they get to draw two cards. It's also it's a pretty heavy protection spell, like three mana uh, to give everything indestructible. I do think it's it's powerful though. I think this is above par, especially for common. Um, if you've never played Commander in draft, you it's not a singleton format in draft because they can't guarantee that you're gonna get a sixty card singleton stack. So at common, you might find yourself, uh, you know, playing a handful of these cards. That's that's not too bad to me. Next up, we have You're Confronted by Robbers. Three and a white for an instant. Choose one. Stall for time. Tap up to three target creatures. Or call for aid. Create three 1-1 one, one white soldier tokens. That's that's pretty good, too. Again, four mana is a little heavy. Uh, four mana tap three creatures isn't fantastic. Four mana create three 1-1s one, also isn't fantastic. But... Because the card's modular and it's instant, uh, and it's common, so you're probably going to get more than one of these, I'd say that it's a par. The flavor text on this is great. Their only mistake was giving the bard time to speak. Never let your bard speak. And that's it for white. I think uh, 
you know, White's pretty solid in this set. There's, White's had a lot of attention and love lately. So it's no surprise that White looks really strong in Battle for Baldur's Gate. I think Steadfast Unicorn is probably my favorite uh, card in this color. Just, uh, just fun. And it looks like Rapidash. So, gonna blend that Pokemon and magic love. Only the good hearted may set foot in the unicorn's domain. Oh, he's protecting his home. <laughs> 